Hey everybody, welcome back to the Digital Imaging Channel. I'm Will and today we're going to be in part two of our three-part series about microfilm scanning cost. The topics we're going to cover today are indexing specs, subcontractors, and project schedules. Before we jump into the video, make sure you subscribe to our channel to keep getting more videos like this. Let's roll. Since we've already talked about the first three factors in part one of the series, we are on factor number four, which is indexing specifications. Indexing is basically how you name your digital files once they're scanned. And this is more or less organizing your files so you can use them later once they're in electronic format. So right now you have them in a microfilm format. So you have them in a roll like this. Once they're digitized, you need to index them so you can find them later. And there are many variations of indexing, and we're going to just give you a couple here to describe how this could affect your costs. So here's a roll of microfilm. We have a 35 millimeter roll. And the simplest way to index your microfilm rolls is by the roll label. And what that means is taking the information from the box that the microfilm comes in. When we do a microfilm scanning project, generally the rolls are in containers like this. And let's say it's a thousand roll project. We get a thousand boxes like this. So we're gonna scan the actual roll, but we also photograph the roll label so we can key or index this information. That's the simplest way to index your rolls is just by whatever's on here. In this case, it's the title of a newspaper and the year and month that it was that the, the issues are from. So you have a thousand of these, you get a thousand files named by this label. That's the simplest way to do it. The next way you can index microfilm is what we call file level indexing or document level indexing. What that basically means is you're gonna find some information on some of these images and key that information so you can name a file by whatever those fields are. For example, again, a newspaper film, a common way to index is by the issue date. So in this example, we would take the images, find the first page of an issue, which would be like this page here, you keep going, and then eventually you'd find the next issue, let's say it's this one here, and you'd capture the information such as January 1st, 2015, and all the pages that are part of that issue behind it would become one file. It's a little more work. You do have to know where those breaks are in the microfilm and then actually key the information from those images, but that's a more detailed way to index your records. This could also be related to, let's say, student records. Instead of a roll of student records with 2,500 images, you just want to find a particular student. That would be student level indexing. So we would go in, scan the records, find that particular student's first page of a document, key the information from there, such as a name, date of birth, student ID, something like that, and then combine the files that are related to that student and get you that file. Another way you can index your digital images once they're scanned for your microfilm is by blips. We referenced this in the previous video, but now we have an example for you. So blips, again, are little kind of tags underneath the microfilm images that indicate where an image is on the film. Here's an example. So what you're looking at here is 16 millimeter duplex microfilm with blips. It's kind of hard for me to put my uh, kind of point to these, but you can probably tell from here that there are some blips, these little tags underneath the images. Some are larger than the others. So this is double level blipped microfilm because what we call double level blips or fat blips, they're wider than the single level blips. What that indicates is it's a start of a new document. So if you have double level blipped microfilm, what we can do is actually find that double level blip, the fat blip, and take all the single levels behind it and turn that into one combined file. So again, instead of having all the images and you're looking around for which image it is, once it's digitized, we can actually take those blips and create documents from them. So you have a couple different ways to index your microfilm once it's digitized. It just comes down to how do you use the microfilm now and how do you want to use it once in electronic format. You can always do more indexing and pay more later, but usually the more complex you get, it's gonna be more expensive. So it's sometimes better to start a little simpler, maybe just roll level indexing and use that building block approach. And if you need more later, you can add on more indexing. Next is cost factor number five, which is subcontractors. 
And when we talk about subcontractors, those are partners of ours that we use for various aspects of a microfilm scanning project. The reason we like subcontractors is because they can handle large scale tasks and they can also help keep our costs down, which then flows onto you and allows your costs to stay a little bit lower in general. Some things that we use subcontractors for in microfilm scanning projects are items such as indexing, uh, framing, quality assurance checks, so QA, various items that we can do. We do provide those services on a regular basis, but if we can use subcontractors, it helps us scale projects better and keep costs down. Something to note about the subcontractors we work with, they're not just random agencies or companies we find when a new project pops up and we just start looking around. These are companies that we worked with for years and we have vetted them through numerous processes. One is we have a business associate agreement or a BAA in place with all of our subcontractors. We also conduct annual internal security audits where auditing and vetting our current and potentially new subcontractors is part of that process. We even have an outside agency conducting an audit on us for a SOC 2 type 2 audit. We have our own process to audit our subcontractors and then another agency is auditing us and the way that we audit our subcontractors. So there are numerous levels of security in place and vetting that goes into who we work with. They're not just random companies. We trust them and we worked with them for years. If we are utilizing a subcontractor for a microfilm scanning project, that does not mean that the entire project is going to them. As I mentioned earlier, most of our scanning projects are something around 10 to 30 steps or so and maybe one or a couple of those steps will be utilizing that subcontractors. Lastly, if you do not want to or you're not able to use subcontractors, it can't be part of your project, that's absolutely fine. We run many projects completely internally. It's just something to note that it may be more expensive if a subcontractor is not able to be used in your project. The sixth factor is your project schedule, and basically what that means is the timeline from start to finish. When you come to us with a project and you say, let's say I have a thousand microfilm rolls I want to scan, we'll give you a ballpark price based on some assumptions. And if you don't ask for something specific, we'll give you a pretty good idea of what the timeline will be for a thousand rolls, maybe after a M1 approval, our milestone process, maybe it's a three to four month project. That's what we'll give you initially just as a, this is going to be a, a standard project. If you get that and you say, well, geez, I need that. I need this done in a month that can affect your price depending on how quickly you need it, what our availability is. Capacity is a topic in the next part of the series. On the flip side, if we say it's going to be three to four month schedule and you come back and say, listen, I don't really have a timeline. You can do it whenever you want. We may be able to bring your price a little bit down because it allows us to get the project when we want it and it gives us a little more flexibility. So your schedule can affect the price. It's good to know what you want. Today we covered factors four, five, and six, which are indexing specs, subcontractors, and project schedule. Check out part three to round out the final three factors in this three-part series. Subscribe to our channel, and I'll see you next time.